tools are a different individual pieces of an object or you can say different meshes and upon merging all these meshes you create one tool inside zbrush a tool can be divided into several sub tools so they work a little differently and they help us also in a lot of modeling techniques and a lot of uh, sculpting techniques so let's see in chapter three how we can work with these sub tools what talents do you have i can jump off this chair ah! oh my god can everyone merge me into one tool <laughs> ZBrush often comes with new names for things that are called something else in other software. For example, in Photoshop, there are, doc like, there are documents which are made from different layers, so we call them layers. And in 3D Studio Max, there are different objects, so we call them different objects. Different objects uh, combines together to create one big object. So same thing as in ZBrush, these individual objects are called subtools. Now let's see how it works. As a simple refresher, we got tools as a separate documents over here, if you will see. And underneath that, we have the subtool option, which can be uh, collapse or uncollapse, just like this. We can have around 999 different subtools over here, although I really have more than 50 or so. So, and each one of these can contain its own 3D model. So if we turn on the transmitter mode from here, we can really see these through the other subtools. And you can do a lot of same things that you could do with the Photoshop layer. Let me go back to my normal view here. So just like in Photoshop, you can also duplicate subtools here, just like the way we uh, duplicate layers. We can rename over here, just like we do in Photoshop or in any other application, or we can delete also. So to duplicate, we can select any object over here. For example, if I will go down, I have this sub tool, which is uh, the eyeglasses. If I want to duplicate this, I will just simply click on it and then I will press the duplicate button. And now I have another eyeglass, a pair of eyeglasses over here. Now, if I want to move it around, I can press W on my keyboard to get this gizmo. I can move it. Okay, I can rotate it, tilt it a little bit here and maybe this way i can put it on his head just like you know we have another pair of uh, goggles which he actually uh, wants to hold on his uh, head okay and then uh, i can go back to my drawing mode and then you can see that i have it here so this is how you can duplicate and then you can move around so this is what i have here now Suppose I don't want this, I can also delete any subtool. And the one that I just created, I don't want this. I don't want two glasses on his head. So what I can do, I can just select this new glasses. I can press over here, the delete button. But as soon I will press the delete button, what the ZBrush will do, it will let us know that we cannot undo deleting of subtool. So if you're comfortable with this, you can click always OK, but I think this is quite dangerous. It might cause you a problem in future because maybe you cannot undo it. So uh, like uh, accidentally, if you will press a delete on any other object that you don't want to delete. So instead of always OK, I will just press OK because I'm sure this is uh, the object that I don't really want. So I will just press OK over here and that will be gone. Now, you can also rearrange these subtools. So, for example, we got these uh, eyeglasses over here. I kind of like to have these eyeglasses up towards the top just because I think the glasses are being on the top of the character. So, you can just click on these arrows to move them up, and you can see that it's moving up if I click here, or I can click this one, it will move it down. But if I want to uh, move it, completely on the top so i have to press shift key on my keyboard okay and once i will press the shift key on my keyboard and then click on 
here so what it will do it will just move right on the top it will just shoot it right on the top so instead of keep on clicking here or clipping or keep on clicking here it's always better to if you want anything to be completely uh, on the top or maybe over here or here you can just press shift and move it but if you want it or somewhere over here so you just move it up and then move it down so this is a shortcut to do that but i want it to be on the top so i will just move it on the top now these sub tools can be made invisible also just like you can hide the layer inside the photoshop or 3d studio max or maya or any other 3d application so how you can do that, you can just click on any object that you want to, uh, any sub tool you want to uh, hide. Like suppose if I click on this one, it will hide that uh, sub tool. Okay. If I want to hide the shirt, I can hide the shirt as well. So this is how you can hide. So if I will go to any one of these layers by uh, like clicking on over here, so you can see that it will come back. Why it is coming back? Because when you select any layer, it's activated. So active layer is always shown even if it is hidden. Now, if I will go to the shirt, the shirt will show because the shirt is active, but the demo soldier is not active. So it will hide itself. But when I will go back to my eye glasses, you will see both of them will be hidden. So this is how the hiding and unhiding works. And anything which is activated, even if it is hidden, will show. Now, to select any one of these sub tools, there are a number of ways to select them. The first way is that you just click on it and it will be selected. And then it will be highlighted. Like you can see that it's highlighted. Everything, other thing, uh, every other thing is dark. And this is hot, only one, the high, highlighted one. That means this is the one which is active right now. But make sure you don't click these icons by mistake because if you will click on these icons by mistake these icons will be activated so I, what i prefer is that if you want to select any layer you just click on the name of that layer like suppose shoulder guard so if i click on the shoulder guard so i will make sure that the layer itself is selected not these icons other way to select these layers is to uh, move around with these uh, up and down arrow so if i will click on this one so it will select the top layer if i will keep on pressing this it will keep on moving the selection top or bottom with this one so this is more safer because uh, you know that you are not going to click on any one of the tools uh, by mistake like photoshop or any other software you can also rename your sub tools suppose if I will go on the top here, I have eyeglasses. I don't want the name eyeglasses. I want to change this name. Maybe I can rename it to goggles. So I can select this one, click on the rename, and I can rename it to goggles and press enter. So now it is renamed as goggles. So this is simply you can how you can rename your subtools over here. Now another way to select this subtool, as I uh, the first two methods which I told you by clicking here okay or by using these arrows the other way to select your sub tool is by pressing alt key on your keyboard and click on that sub tool that you want to select suppose i want to select this glove so i will press alt on my keyboard and i will click on this glove and this glove layer will be selected so this is one other way to do that uh, and this uh, method we have used quite a lot in our previous uh, lessons and also you can add new primitives to your scene by clicking on a pen button so suppose if i want something to add over here i can press a pen we have gone through this uh, briefly in our last lesson but let's see here as well i will press a pen and i can choose any one of these primitive over here maybe i can click on this ring and as soon as i will press that it will be appended in the end and then if you want you can move it wherever you want make sure this is selected otherwise it will move the selected one okay so i can move this one off the top maybe i can bring it here and it can be a nice uh kind of a fanny pack he's wearing or you can see uh, you can say a swimming tube or something like that okay so this is how you can append any other primitive over here you can bring your own primitive that you have created in other 
uh, you know, 3D objects, you can bring them here as well. Okay, so as you can see that in concept, it's not too different from most other software. Hopefully this information can help you keep your scenes organized when you have multiple objects to keep track of. And if you have liked my tutorial video, click on the like button. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, subscribe it. And you may also give me a shout out on your uh, social media account so that your friends who wants to learn uh, these courses, which I have already done, or this uh, ZBrush that I'm going through right now. So just share them on your social media account so it can benefit other people also. And thanks a lot for supporting me. And this is all I all want. I want all your support so I can create uh, more content because it will motivate me. Your support always motivates me. And I uh, will again highly appreciate if you watch all my videos online instead of downloading because if I don't get watch time hours, it usually demotivates me. So thank you guys. Thanks a lot for uh, supporting me. And until the uh, next lesson, take care of yourself and we'll meet soon. Thank you.